Hi everyone and welcome back to another video on practical prescribing for doctors. If you haven't already, make sure you have a look at the last two videos on prescribing, including laxatives, antiemetics, analgesia and VTE. As a reminder, the focus of these videos are to show you how to practically prescribe on a drug chart and know the most common types of medications that you will be asked to prescribe when you start working as a doctor. It can be really scary to prescribe when you first start off working, but hopefully by seeing what it looks like in these videos, it won't be as terrifying. So today we'll be covering antibiotics. Now I'm going to cover some of the most common antibiotics that you'll prescribe, but then again, the layout is very similar for all of them. So this should give you an idea of what it looks like. The first antibiotic that we're going to cover can be quite tricky and a lot of doctors can find it confusing in the beginning. And that is gentamicin. Now gentamicin is an aminoglycoside and it's a very broad spectrum antibiotic that's great for uh, severe infections and things like sepsis. So it's very much used in hospitals. Gentamicin is most effective at its peak and it's very important to measure levels so that you can monitor for toxicity. So this will differ in different countries and different trusts, so make sure that you check your own trust's guidelines. But in my case, gentamicin levels are checked 7 to 14 hours after the dose administration. And based on that level, you will be able to re-prescribe when the next dose should be given to make sure that it's not toxic for the patient. This may all sound very confusing, but I'll just show you. So as you can see at the top of the page, there is the dosing regimen and I'll show you how to calculate that. So either 5 or 3 milligrams per kilo. Then you will have the date that the drug is given as well as the time, the dose which I'll show you how to calculate and the prescriber's GMC and signature. This section is completed by the nurses when the drug is actually given to the patient. The next bit is the gentamicin level and this level, so 3.2, is how much gentamicin there is in the patient's body and you get that from the blood test and then you want to calculate the dosing interval. So for this we need the calculator. This is a calculator on my trust website and I just click on the link and here I'm going to calculate the first dosing interval. So that's whether the patient needs a regimen of five or three milligrams per kilo. So you enter their height in feet and inches, their weight in kilograms. It's pretty self-explanatory. You enter their age, their gender, and their creatinine level. So this is gonna be a marker of how good their renal function is. Click on the dose, and as you will see here, there's two important numbers. There's the dosage at the bottom, so how much they will get each time, 320 milligrams, and the dosing regimen, which is five milligrams per kilogram. So now you can circle that on the drug chart and you know how much to give them. The next bit is going to be the dosing interval. So how often can you give these 320 milligrams? So you put the dosing regime that you calculated, the level that you found from the blood test, and you put in the time difference between when the last dose was given and when this level that you got from the blood test was collected. Click on interval, and this tells you that the patient can receive their next dose after 24 hours. Okay, so now we go back to the example. As you can see, the first dose was given at 10 o'clock in the morning, and it was 300 milligrams for a dosing regimen of five milligrams per kilogram. On the 5th of the 7th, they had a sample collected at 6 p.m. So you want to know when it was collected. I sign it and then I put what the level was. So the level was 3.2 from the blood test. I insert this on the gentamicin calculator that I showed you and it tells me that the next dose can be given in 24 hours. Now that I have the dosing interval, all I need to calculate is from the last time the dose was given, so 10 o'clock in the morning, what's 24 hours plus that? And that would be 10 o'clock the next morning. So you just put in that time, 10 o'clock in the morning on the 6th, the dose to be given will be the same and you put your GMC number and your signature and the date that you actually prescribed it and that's it. So it might look very confusing but it's not actually that bad. If now we get to some simpler antibiotics to prescribe and the ones I want to show you are AMG, so amoxicillin, metronidazole and gentamicin. This is a very common combination that is given for broad spectrum cover for things like sepsis of unknown origin. So I've shown you gentamicin already, which was the most complicated one. And here you have amoxicillin. Usually you'll give one gram IV three times a day. Now, obviously, always check your trust guidelines because there will be different antibiotics indicated for different conditions as well as different dosages depending on where you are. So this is just to show you a realistic example of what happens in my trust um, and how things are actually prescribed. So here I'm putting 8, 16, 22 as a three times a day. I've crossed off the first one because I'm imagining that the patient has come in later in the day. And I'm putting the indication, which is unknown source sepsis. 
If it's unknown when the antibiotic will be stopped, just put review in 48 hours so that at least it is reviewed and reassessed. The next one is metronidazole. So this is part of AMG that I mentioned. This is 500 milligrams IV. You put the date, you give it three times a day. And note that initially for sepsis unknown source, we may start by giving IV antibiotics. But once we have cultures that come back and we have a better idea of what we're fighting, we may decide to give an oral dose or to change those antibiotics. So these three are a very common combination that you may give as antibiotics for a patient. The next one is maybe not as common, but flucloxacillin for cellulitis. And I'm putting a strong dose for severe cellulitis here, and it's two grams IV. You give it four times a day, so QDS. I'm just splitting the doses there. I've crossed off the first one as if the patient is going to start from midday, and I'm putting the indication, so cellulitis. You might see things like as per micro documented in the drug chart and that just means that there's been advice directly from the microbiologist to give a certain antibiotic and it's really helpful to have that on the drug chart so that you know that if there's a weird dose or a weird antibiotic it's for a reason. So here I've put review antibiotics after seven days. The next one that I want to show you is comoxiclav. 625 milligrams oral so the dose here is three times a day and again you write the indication put your gmc number and sign a start date and a stop date so for me i've put review what well, i've put stop after five days and i've crossed off the rest of the drug chart this was a very short video but i hope you found it useful and now know how to prescribe common antibiotics on a drug chart and how to calculate gentamicin doses if there are any medications that you'd like to see prescribed or any topics that you'd find helpful let me know in the comments down below i will see you in the next video bye